أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وتلك حجتنا آتيناها إبراهيم على قومه نرفع درجات من نشاء إن ربك حكيم عليم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي today I want to share something with you about Ibrahim عليه السلام that is not commonly understood and some people actually even get so confused about it it messes them up in their faith First and foremost, Ibrahim alayhi salam looked at the sun and the moon and he looked at, you know, and he said, this is my Lord. And this, you know, this, but it can't be, it sets. And I want, and these are also ayat of the same surah of Surah Al-An'am. But I want to share a clarification with you. Ibrahim alayhi salam is one of the most intelligent human beings that ever lived. It's not literal that he saw the sun and got excited and started worshipping it. And the moment it set, he said, I didn't realize it sets. I can't worship that. Oh, but the moon is so shiny. I should go for the moon. But then the moon disappeared and I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Morning came and the sun disappeared. I didn't realize it's not that permanent. That it's a demonstration of the stupidity of shirk. He's not actually believing in these things. He's demonstrating how silly can you be that you believe in these things. Now, in doing so, obviously he's offending. If you consider the sarcasm, he's offending his people. He's going right at them. And later on he gets even more offensive. And he goes and he destroys the idols, doesn't he? He destroys all the idols and leaves the axe in the, in the big one's hands. And when they ask, he said, فَاسْأَلُوا كَبِيرًا مِنْ Asked the big one among them. Now you notice that other prophets don't do this, right? Other prophets don't go break idols. They, they don't go, like destroy the temples of the idol worshippers. The Rasul ﷺ didn't do that until after Fath Makkah, but in, his, in a stage of da'wah he didn't do that. He didn't do that as a tool of da'wah. He never did. There were actually, I, I spoke to a, a person from one of the countries in the Muslim world, I'd rather not name, where there were a bunch of really excited young men who said, we're going to revive the sunnah of Ibrahim salam. So they went into a temple and they destroyed the idols. Because they, they live in a country where there are some you know, people of different religions and some religions have temples with idols in them. They went and destroyed the idols and they said, we're reviving the legacy of Ibrahim salam. Look at how Allah responds to that. Because no, somebody might even say, look, your religion teaches intolerance. Your prophet, he goes and he destroys the sacred sites of other, other religions. How can you defend yourself? Allah Azza wa Jal is enough to clarify not just for the non-Muslims, for the Muslims themselves. Look at what he says. Tilka hujjat wa tilka hujjatuna atainaha Ibrahim. That in fact is the way we, we made a case, or it was our way of making a case, that we had in particular and exclusively given to Ibrahim. In other words, you can never use that line ever again for anybody else. Tilka hujjatuna atainaha Ibrahim ala qawmihi against his nation. Not li qawmihi for his nation. Allah Azza wa Jal sends people for a nation with Ibrahim alayhi salam's people. Allah spent, sent a particular admonition and this was a case made against them. And it was particular to Ibrahim alayhi salam. It cannot be repeated again in light of the ayah. And some people say, well, what about the comparison between that? And the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa who destroyed the idols when Makkah was conquered. Well actually when Makkah was conquered, it was the time of the punishment. It wasn't the time of da'wah. When Makkah was conquered, this is when a nation is defeated by Allah's help, then that nation is annihilated. It's destroyed by Allah's will. But Allah only chose to destroy their false faith, but not them. So this was actually a mercy given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and not a punishment. It's the other way around. In the case of Ibrahim السلام, however, it was something very, very specific given to him to make a case against very difficult people. It seems as though those people were very hard to communicate with. So Allah gave Ibrahim السلام, certain tactics that were never given to any other prophet. And that's why he put it in this way. وَتِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا آتَيْنَاهَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَنْ نَشَاءٍ and never think less of Ibrahim السلام, because in this ayah Allah says, we raise the ranks of whoever we want. We raise in ranks whoever we want. Wallahu inna rabbaka hakimun alim. No doubt your master is full of wisdom, all knowledgeable. In other words, even that strategy for that time was the most wise strategy. It was still the one full of wisdom. Doesn't matter what other, other critics say. We, we stand by the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. For his time, it was the perfect thing to do. And that is why Allah revealed it to him. This is the kind of confidence 
and reliance we have to have not only in revelations, but also in the legacies of our Prophets And we should never feel like we have to respond to critics to justify the behaviors of our Prophets. It's not this way. The Prophets didn't come so we could justify them. The Prophets came so other people would have to justify their falsehood. It's the other way around. May Allah Jal give us love, respect, honor, and even pride in our in all of our messengers. Barakallahu li walakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.